Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining PCF Worship Online. We're so glad that you found us. Let us come before the Lord and just ask Him to come in and bless this time. Thank you, Father, for your uh, powerful grace and just that you use that grace uh, so liberally, Lord, and that you seek to um, engage with us in such unique and special ways. Every time we worship with Him, He wants to engage with us, and it's never the same way. It's always different, Lord. And so we just ask for that now, Lord, as we begin in worship, Lord. We ask for you to bless this time, Father. Thank you, God.
promise still stands Great is your faithfulness And faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me yet Father, people need to be reminded. There are people listening today that need to be reminded that we are still in your hands, Lord, and that you don't give up on us, Father. Father, just minister in those dark places right now in each of our lives. We have a hard time connecting with you, Lord, or giving over to you, Father. Lord, bring those blessings. Some of us have been battling for a while. We need to call on the Father for renewal today, Lord. So we call on renewal, Lord. Your renewing grace, your renewing spirit, Father. Thank you, Lord. We're going to sing again. I've seen you move. Oh, 
are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us.
God, His name is Jesus. Put out sing. Why? celebrate who you are, Father. Thank you.
beyond our galaxy You are holy Holy The universe declares your majesty You are holy Holy Yes, you are holy Holy Our King is holy you are holy, holy, yes, you are holy, holy. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, uh, for the message that's coming today. I just pray that you spent this worship time preparing our hearts, Father, um, and just correcting us before. Uh, we read your word so that we can apply your word uh, efficiently, Lord. We can apply your uh, word um, and that it will bring fruit, Lord, because that's what we desire. We desire to have your word um, come onto the soil of our hearts, fall on that, and then we can uh, bear that fruit that will bring life to this world, Lord Jesus. That's, that's, just, that's all we want, Father. So we praise you. You're our king. In your name, amen. Thank you, Father. Hi there, my name's John Wallace, and I have known your pastor, John Mullen, for almost 30 years. I've been a pastor to him, a mentor, an advisor, a spiritual father. I was involved with John and Kelsey's second wedding ceremony you might ask them about the first one, if you don't know about it. But uh, we've come, my wife and Suzanne and I have come to Prague uh, many times. And uh, we were going to come this spring, but because of the COVID pandemic, uh, we postponed. But we hope to get back over there soon. Uh, today, I want to share with you a dynamic of the kingdom of God that is very special to my heart. And that's called listening to God. Or, as we'll see in a minute, it's hearing the voice of our shepherd. One of the definitions of dynamic, I'm talking about a dynamic of the kingdom. One of the definitions of dynamic is that it is an underlying cause for change or growth. So it's an underlying cause for change or growth. You know, if you know Jesus, if you've given your life to him, if you have exchanged life with him, giving him your life and receiving his life so that he lives inside of you, then you have been introduced, the scripture says, into the kingdom of God. And what is the kingdom? The kingdom of God is God's rule or his reign in every part of our lives spirit, soul, and body. So within that kingdom activity, within that rule or reign of God going on inside of us, there are dynamics, there are causes, underlying causes for growth. And one of the most important is what I want to share with you today, and that is listening to God, hearing his voice. Jesus said in John 10, 27, after he has said, I am the good shepherd, Jesus said in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Now look at that verse. What do you think is a requirement for hearing Jesus' voice? Well, if you said being his sheep, you're right. You're correct. That is the requirement for hearing his voice. So if we know Jesus, if we're one of his sheep, then we are enabled and even expected to hear his voice. No, we're called into a relationship with God. God the Father, God the Son, or Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And one of those most crucial ingredients for a relationship, a good relationship, is good communication. 
It's good two-way communication. So it's speaking and listening. So let's think about what makes good two-way communication with God. First, to listen to God, we've got to prepare to listen to God. You know, we all normally live on the natural plane. What do I mean by that? It means that we live our life using our five natural senses. Our sight, our hearing, our smelling, our tasting, and our touching. And we try to integrate or make sense of our world using those senses. And then we try to, to relate to it and respond to it in our rational mind. But the scriptures tells us as believers in Jesus, we are spiritual beings. Look at these three passages in scripture. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. That means you can live spiritually and not just naturally. Look at the, uh, another verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Paul says, Do you not know that you are a temple of God and the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you? You have God's Spirit living inside of you. And then in the previous chapter, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, it says, But just as it is written, Things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. Isn't that an amazing promise? Isn't that an amazing idea that it has things that we can't see with our, with our physical eyes or hear with our physical ears, things that haven't even entered into our heart or our imagination. The Holy Spirit has been given to us in order to reveal those things from God. And those things are often communicated when God speaks to us. So we're spiritual beings. And we're to walk not by our physical or natural eyesight, but by using our spiritual senses, including our spiritual ears. We got to learn to listen to God. And that takes yielding to this spirit that dwells within us. Secondly, it means persevering in exercising our spiritual senses. Yes, I believe we have at least five spiritual senses to correspond to the five natural senses. We can have spiritual eyesight, spiritual hearing, spiritual smelling, spiritual tasting, and spiritual touching. So we persevere in exercising those spiritual senses. And then thirdly, about listening to God, is we've got to practice. We've got to practice. It takes time to learn to listen to God. I've been a Christian for over 50 years, and I've been listening, specifically listening for God to speak to me for over 35 years, and I'm still learning. I'm still on the learning curve, so to speak. So it takes time and practice. And then we have to want to listen. You know, all through Scripture, God pleads and begs with his people, listen to me. In 2 Kings 7, the prophet Elisha says to the people, listen to the word of the Lord. In Isaiah the prophet, in chapter 51, God says, pay attention to me, O my people, and give ear to me, O my nation. Pay attention and give ear or listen to me. Mark 3, Jesus starts his parable of the sower and the seed with, listen to this. 
a sower went out to sow. And then at the last book of the Bible, Revelation 3, verse 20, at one of the letters to the churches, Jesus himself says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, there it is, hears my voice, and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So God is always saying, listen to me. He's always trying to get our attention. Listen to this quote by a man named Ernest Boyer, Jr. God is always present to us. The greatest thing that we can do in life is to teach ourselves to always be present to God. He's always present with us. We just need to cultivate the expectation and the focus on Him and being present with Him. You know, being willing to listen goes hand in hand with being willing to respond once we hear Him. Suzanne and I have three children. When they were young, we used to take them to the playground. And so they would be playing for quite some time and finally, we would say, it's time to go home. And we'd call out to them, Jason, Brendan, Lindsay, it's time to go home. Do you think they came on the first time? Very rarely. Usually, my wife or I would have to call three times or maybe even more or maybe even go out to where they were and tell them it was time to go home. Now, do you think that that was because they didn't hear us the first or the second or the third time? No, they heard us. They just didn't want to respond because they wanted to do what they wanted to do. And sometimes this is the same with us. We don't want to listen to God because we don't want to have to respond to Him. We want to keep doing what we're doing. So, You've got to be willing to listen, but you've also got to be willing to respond. You know, we have to stop listening to other things. If you're trying to listen to me today, and you have music or someone else talking on one of your devices, then you're not listening to me. Why? Because you're being distracted by something else. Sometimes that distraction is external, like these devices. Sometimes it's an internal distraction. We're thinking about other things. We're thinking about what we have to go and get at the market tomorrow. Or we're thinking about a business meeting that's coming up this week. When we have external distractions or internal distractions, those things block us from hearing God. Sometimes what blocks us is we have a fast food mentality. What do I mean by that? Well, there are places that serve food where you can order your food and within a minute or two, you can have that food ready for you. Sometimes we treat God that way. It's like when we pray, like ordering food, we expect God to answer within a minute or two. <laughs> but sometimes He just doesn't do that. Sometimes He's waiting for us to get quiet. So here are some suggestions in preparing ourselves to listen to God. Get quiet. Ask Him to free us from distractions. Then do what we need to do to cooperate to free ourselves from distractions. Maybe turn off that device. Focus our attention on God. And then speak with Him. That's prayer. But then give time for listening. What would happen if tomorrow morning I got up where I'm living, my wife was in the kitchen, and I came in. I said, good morning, honey. And uh, I'm going to have some breakfast today. And so I sit down and I have my breakfast. And maybe I tell her what I'm going to do that day. And maybe I ask her to do me a favor that day. And then I tell her I'm leaving and say goodbye. And I walk out the door. 
that's not a very good relationship. That's not very good communication. Why? Because I didn't give her a, t a chance to respond. We've got to speak with him, speak with God, and then give time for listening to how he wants to pray and, and respond to us. So having prepared ourselves to listen, we are sensitive now to the many different ways that he speaks. What are ways of hearing God? You know, God speaks to us through his word, the Bible. In Acts chapter 2, Peter is preaching at Pentecost, and even in his message, he quotes the Bible. He quotes Joel 2. He's speaking to Jewish people who knew the Old Testament. And so he says, essentially, hear what the Lord is saying. And he uses scripture. In Acts chapter 15, the elders and the apostles are gathered in Jerusalem to try to decide what to do about these Gentiles, these non-Jews who are believing in Jesus. They're debating. They're giving information. They're giving their opinion. And then James, an elder at Jerusalem, stands up and he quotes the Bible. He quotes from the prophet Amos. And the decision is made because they heard God speak to them through the scriptures. You know, when I used to be a dentist and I heard the Lord speaking to me about going to seminary school to study to be a pastor. So I enrolled in seminary and my plan was is to keep doing dentistry full time and go to seminary part time. So I took two classes to begin with, but one night I couldn't go to sleep. And I just thought maybe God was trying to get my attention. So I went downstairs, sat down at my dining table, and I opened the Bible and just let the Bible open up. And I said, Lord, speak to me from your word. And this is where my eyes rested. This is in Ephesians 5 verses 15 and 16. It says, Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. I saw God speaking to me out of this passage, make the most of your time, which meant for me to flip-flop, to turn it upside down, and to go to seminary school full-time, and do my dentistry part-time. So God spoke to me using the Bible. God also speaks to us in pictures. And I want to mention three different kinds of pictures. First are visions. Those are mental pictures or images that we get a lot of the times when our eyes are closed, when we're praying for ourselves or for someone else, and God gives us a picture. He's trying to speak to us and tell us something. Sometimes, more rarely, I've found, is the, those visions are when our eyes are open and what we see is a picture or an image superimposed on what our natural eyes are seeing. We see people all through Scripture having visions, and God still speaks through visions today. A second vi a picture way is dreams. It's dreams. And again, in Scripture, we see people all through Scripture having dreams where God spoke to them to give them direction or encouragement or correction, uh, or just to help them. Uh, years ago, my wife and I were in Toronto, Canada, and we had a conversation with a man from India. He said earlier that he had been studying in London, England, and he was walking through a park when a young lady came to him and began to speak to him about believing in Jesus. Well, he didn't believe in Jesus, and so he debated her back and forth for several minutes. Finally, she said to him, I'm going to pray that God gives you a dream to show you that Jesus really is the Son of God. He told us that that very night he had a dream 
And in the dream, a man in a white robe walked up to him and said, I am Jesus. I am the real Son of God. So the next day, when the man from India woke up, he went back to the park, found that young lady, and gave his life to Jesus. And it all happened because God gave him a dream. The third way is nature. God speaks to us through nature that we see. Jesus used nature in his parables, for example. Another way that God speaks to us is just with his voice. Uh, in Acts 13, 2, there are a group of church leaders gathered together in a, in a town called Antioch. And it said they were teachers and prophets. And while they were there, it says, the Holy Spirit said to them, set apart Barnabas and Saul for me. Now, I don't know if the Holy Spirit said audibly so that they all heard at one time, or because some of them were prophets, perhaps the Holy Spirit spoke through the prophet, but they heard God's voice. We can hear God's voice in our head. Of course, there are other voices in our head, and we've got to discern or distinguish or test those voices. Or sometimes we hear the audible voice of God. That means we hear his voice outside of our head. But I've found that this is more rare. So God speaks to us with his voice. And then God speaks to us with impressions. This happened even to Jesus. Listen to this story in Mark chapter 2. Perhaps you'll remember it. Jesus is in a house, and he's teaching and speaking. And the house is extremely crowded. And some people come bringing their friend who was a paralytic. He couldn't walk or pro probably couldn't even move his arms. So he was on a, a, a bed of sorts. And so they couldn't find room, so they let him down through the roof. They pulled across the, the, the roof and let him down through an opening in the roof. And it, I'm going to start reading in Mark 2, verse 5. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. But some of the scribes, those were the Jewish leaders, were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. So they weren't saying anything out loud. They were just thinking this. They were reasoning in their hearts. Verse 7, Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And then look what happens in verse 8. Immediately Jesus, aware in his spirit that they were reasoning that way within themselves. So all of a sudden the spirit spoke in Jesus' spirit and told him, gave him an impression about what these scribes were thinking. An impression is just a thought that God gives you or a series of thoughts that God just gives you, you weren't thinking about it, and all of a sudden, boom, there that is. But again, those things have to be tested and distinguished. And the last way is God speaks to us through gifted people, through spiritually gifted people, through prophecy, teaching, exhortation, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, faith, healing, miracles. He can speak through all of these spiritual gifts, through people speaking to us, encouraging us, giving direction, perhaps even correcting us in a loving way. These can be words of God. We can listen to God speaking through other people. So if you're a sheep, you can hear the Good Shepherd's voice. God is always speaking to us. So as we quiet ourselves, and once we get into the habit of hearing him when we're quiet, then sometimes he speaks to us wherever we are, even in a crowd. But as we quiet ourselves and we remove distractions, we can begin to distinguish his voice. This takes practice. I've said before, I'm still learning too. So as we learn to hear God in a believing community, we can test that with other people. We can say, Hey, I think I've heard from God. Let me tell you what he said and tell me what you think. 
we can grow in this crucially important dynamic in the kingdom of God. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you for everyone who is watching and listening to this video. And Lord, because you have been so good to me by imparting to me the ability to hear you on so many different occasions in so many different ways, Lord, I just pray a prayer of impartation to impart to people, to your sheep, a better ability to hear your voice and then to respond to you in love and obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.